Hello everyone, uh, my name's Ian Lowry, so I am a member of North Essex Astronomical Society and tonight we are hoping to show you a few interesting objects uh, from around the night sky uh, using one of our uh, telescopes that I've got in my back garden here. Um, we'll be using a camera, a black and white camera, to look at some of the views. We are battling the clouds a bit tonight, so uh, we may struggle to see some of the things we wanted to see. Uh, it was nice and clear earlier, but unfortunately a few clouds have rolled in. Uh, but we will hopefully be able to see a few bits and pieces around the sky. So uh, first off, the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, an object called the um, Owl Nebula, um, the Owl Cluster. Now that is um, basically in the northern part of the sky. Um, so if we take a look around, so if you imagine uh, the sun has just set in the west over here, you may have been able to see v Venus earlier on, a really bright object in the sky. So if you look in the direction of the west, and then we actually come around a bit further towards the north, so we've basically got where the sunset was on our left on our left hand side. Um, if we look up a bit, uh, what you should see is the plough. This is the familiar constellation many of you will know. Uh, it looks a bit like a, an upside down saucepan at the moment. Um, so you can see the handle, these three stars here. Then you can see the actual sort of body of the plough. If you take the two end stars and go in a straight line, you'll come to the pole star, uh, the north star here, which is what everything else in the sky rotates around. And then on the other side of the pole star, we've got a constellation called Cassiopeia. Um, which is a bit like a W. Again, it's on its side at the moment, but it looks like a W shape. Uh, if we get a bit closer to that Cassiope here, we will actually be able to see roughly where we're going to be looking. So I'll find the thing that we're looking for here. Um, we take a look, there it is. So um, basically, if we imagine the W, if we take the, the left-hand side of the W just a bit down from so the bottom star in that W, you've got the Owl Cluster. Now you may wonder why is that called the Owl Cluster? Um, it looks a bit just like a, a random bunch of stars here. But if we actually take a look at the live view that I've been making of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the cluster tonight through my telescope, um, you will see um, that what we actually have, here it is, it, it's a bit sort of odd here because it's actually upside down. But if we imagine um, there are um, two stars here, which are the, uh, the the eyes of the owl. If we can imagine that, um, basically this star and this star here are the eyes. If you imagine this is the owl's body, and these are the wings of the owl. Um, so what we can do is we can zoom in a bit maybe on this. Um, we go into that much. And you can see going a little bit further, um, going a bit further, sorry, than that. There we go. You can see the uh, body of the owl and the head of the owl basically standing on his head. So these are his wings here. This is his foot. These are his eyes. Um, I've actually got a photograph of the owl, which uh, one of our members took a few years ago. I'll bring that up for you in a second. Um, just Find the right one here. There we go. If we take a look at that. Um, so this is the, the owl the right way up. And again, now if you look, you can see the owl's eyes here. Here's the body, and these lines of stars here are its wings. Um, now, the owl cluster itself is is a genuine cluster of stars. All the stars kind of belong together. Um, they're about 7,900 light years away. So if you imagine what you're actually seeing in these photographs and images, um, go back to the live view, this image here, the light from these stars uh, came to us about 7, 000, from 7,900 years ago. So, um, you know, quite a long time in the past. The stars themselves are actually about 21 million years old. Um, so there are about 150 stars in total visible in this cluster. Um, some of them are quite bright, the ones we've been looking at that look like the owl shape, but there are quite a few dimmer ones as well. So there are about 150 stars in this cluster. As I say, so that is um, about 7,900 light years away, 21 million years old. Um, it's quite an easy one to find in a, in a small telescope. Uh, again, if we look at the planetarium view, um, to say all you really need to do is find um, Cassiopeia, 
we'll just again remind ourselves where that is so again if you can find north if you can find the pole star using the plow go across the opposite side of the pole star to Cassiopeia um, the owl is just off this bit of the W here um, pretty easy to see it's quite bright although it's quite small so you need a bit of magnification to pick it up um, but really that's that's kind of a pretty ob pretty easy object to find it's one of the favorites uh, kids love to look at it because it is um, it does look like an owl it does look like what it says uh, some people call it the ET cluster again for obvious reasons um, looks a bit like uh, a bit like ET um, in this case standing on his head but uh, you know again a very uh, fun object to find quite easy to find in the sky so that's our first object tonight the owl cluster um, what we will do I'll leave you with that picture of that now I'm going to see if I can move the telescope to look at another object in the sky this is going to be a bit of a challenge because I'm not quite sure where the clouds are because I'm indoors and the clouds are outside however um, what we will do is we'll see if we can move just to a nearby bit of the sky um, to actually see if we can find something else so just bear with you, me a minute um, disconnect that we will connect that chap there and we will go to a uh, nebula that we're going to have a look at um, I'm just moving the telescope at the moment that will take a, a few moments to finish moving bear with me while that happens but it's on the move may have to go the long way around sometimes the way these telescopes work they're kind of set up so that they're um, on an, what we call an equatorial mount which makes it easy to track stuff in the sky but sometimes it means that if the telescope is pointing on one side of the, of the mount it needs to go an awful way, a long way around to end up pointing somewhere else so right we should be roughly in the right spot now and I'm just going to see whether we've got any clouds going on here um, bear with me a minute yes we've got something so we can actually see what I will do now is I will um, see if I can actually center on this object. Bear with me a minute. It takes a few moments. Actually, I can show you what's going on. You can see what's going on in this little screen down on the right here. Um, we've got a bit of software that actually automatically figures out what we're looking at. Uh, it will take a picture, decide whether it likes what it sees. If we're not in the right position, it will try and... Um, Move the telescope to get to the right spot so you can see it's done one attempt and it's not happy we're not quite in the right position what it will do then is it will take another picture um, and move the telescope and work out whether it's in the right place so there we go now it's happy we're in the right spot now we need to change to a different piece of software which we're using to actually take the images um, so we'll now reconnect to camera using that one um, <laughs> What we now need to do is start taking some exposures. Now these exposures take about 30 seconds. So we will just bear with me a minute now. So this takes about 30 seconds. Zoom all the way out to fit the image in the frame. Now this is going to take a few minutes. So what we'll do is while we're waiting for these pictures to start building up. We will take a look at where we are trying to look in the sky um, again if we go back to our planetarium um, and zoom out what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the heart nebula um, so that is not too far away in the sky from the owl cluster we take a look for it find it for us as you can see so it's again it's near to Cassiopeia so we already know the owl cluster is down here uh, the heart nebula is just up here so again reminding ourselves of where we are in the sky here sunsets in the west you might see Venus um, turn around and face north so the sunsets on your left hand side look up a bit and to the, the right you will see uh, the uh, plough here plough take the two end stars of the plough move across find the north star then on the other side of the North Star we find Cassiopeia, this W-shaped constellation here and the Heart Nebula that we're looking at is um, here off the uh, edge of the W so that's where we're looking um, 
Now what we'll do is we'll see whether we're getting anything. So now what I need to do is correct this out a bit. Now this might take a little while to build up. We've got one image. We might need to do a bit of adjusting. So bear with me a minute to get out of it. Um, might take a minute or two to build up. It's quite a faint object. I've not tried this before. Uh, Getting a huge amount of one, unfortunately, is quite dim. Um, but we can actually take a look at what we would see uh, if we take a long exposure photograph of what I have actually got. Again, I've got an image of this that I took uh, a few weeks ago. Um, um, long exposure, so this is about sort of three or four hours of exposures for this image. Um, if we take a look at that. Now this is an image of the heart nebula. Um, now this is a gas nebula, so it has a lot of different types of gas in it, mainly hydrogen gas, which is what most stars are made from. And it also has a bit of oxygen, a bit of sulfur, and quite a few other elements in there as well. Um, it's, it's basically a star forming region. Now this image that I've taken uh, here is, um, in the middle here, this is basically where the stars that are illuminating the nebula are. These these formed um, some time ago, so they are um, about 50. Uh, th there are a few bright stars in the middle here that are about 50 times bigger than the sun, and there are lots of much smaller stars that are much smaller than the sun, but the 50 times bigger than the sun stars, these, these bright ones in the middle here, basically making all of this hydrogen gas glow um, that then causes causes us to be able to see the nebula, but it's also in the process of destroying the nebulas because there's so much ra uh, in ultraviolet radiation stuff that gives you a suntan uh, beaming out of these really hot young stars. But they actually start pushing the gas away, and that's what we're seeing going on here. It's kind of, it's kind of like a big bubble, basically. All this gas is getting blown out, having formed these stars. They now now start clearing the, clearing away the, the neighbourhood and, ma and making space for themselves. Um, so that's basically what, what, what a nebula is. Well, there are a lot of them in the sky, but this is one of the nicer ones to look at. Um, again, it's about 7,500 light years away. Um, you won't see it through a small telescope. You really need to take an image to, to view it. Um, I'm not having a lot of luck with imaging this, so let's see if I can adjust this and convince it to go any better. I might have to really stretching on it. I'm going to see whether I can get anything out of this at all. Before we give up and move on. All right, so not a huge amount here, but we have got something. So what I'll do is show you the live view. Um, so again, you've seen the photograph. Now what you can see here is um, these are the stars in the middle, the really bright ones we told you about. What's just starting to appear around the edges is all of that hydrogen gas. Now it's quite dim and faint and as I say the image that we looked at um, here this is about three or four hours of, of imaging and even that's not really particularly much on this target. Uh, the image that we're looking at is actually a false colour image. Um, I've used some special filters that um, only let through certain colours of light that are um, related to hydrogen, sulphur and oxygen and then I've given them um, very contrasting colours in the kind of blue, green and, and red areas of the spectrum. If you actually took a, a true colour image of the Hart Nebula, it would actually appear very, very um, red because the main gas in there is hydrogen and the main colour that the gas emit, hydrogen emits in nebulae is, is red in colour. Um, we would see it more as sort of grey colour if we looked at a, a nebula, which we may be able to do later on uh, with, through our telescope because our eyes are not sensitive to colour um, uh, when it's really, really dim, so we only see in black and white. But if we could see it, it would actually appear red. The reason we use these really garish colours is actually to help us contrast the different elements so that we can see where there's more hydrogen, where there's more oxygen and where there's more sulphur in, in this nebula. Um, and it also looks very pretty as well, so that's, that's another reason for doing it. So um, that's the Heart Nebula. Now it's got a next door neighbour which we might have a go at as well. So again, you just bear with me. I'll show you what we're doing. We'll, we'll see if we can um, 
we can move to a, a, a new object. So what I will do is I'll turn that off. I will disconnect my camera from this piece of software. Uh, we're using a little bit of software just to track the sky as well. Um, what we'll next do is we'll go back to our image, uh, our object finding software. We need to connect to the camera in this. Um, we'll then go to this other nebula. Have we just moved to it first? Yes. Take a moment and track where the mount is using this bit of software here. Lots and lots of different bits of software that we need to make all this stuff work. Um, most of it is free or fairly cheap. Unfortunately, the telescopes and cameras are not, but um, not, not too expensive. That should be pretty much spot on now. The object we're going to look at is not very far away. What we'll do is just see whether we've actually got anything, whether we've got clouds or whether we've got some clear sky. Um, lovely, we can actually see some stuff. Tracking that, this helps just to keep the telescope centered. Again, what we'll do is see if we can um, center on the target so the software will try to make sure it's pointing in exactly the right spot. Uh, the telescope mount itself is not very accurate. It can get quite close within you know, a sort of couple of degrees on the sky, but sometimes it can be quite way out. So we use this software to just make sure that we are pointing at what we're pointing at. Uh, we think we're pointing at rather than a blank patch of the sky. Very, very useful for finding things that you can't actually see. Um, it'd be quite difficult if uh, if we had to do it by eye. We'd have to use loads of star charts and really, really work hard to verify that we are actually looking at the um, correct part of the sky. Okay, so that hasn't worked. So what we'll do is we'll give up on that. Um, and we'll just double check that we are we're getting some stars. We'll try as we'll go back to the live stacking. Remembering to connect um, camera in here. Reconnect it here. Um, 30 second exposures, and we're going to live stack them. Wait, so now we've got to wait 30 seconds for an image to appear. So, again, um, while we're waiting for that to happen, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the planetarium and see where this object is that we're going to be looking at. Um, it is uh, right next door, so it's this object here um, called the Sol Nebula, so very imaginatively the Heart Nebula here and the Sol Nebula here. They are related, they're, they're the same sort of stuff, the same sort of object. Again, just reminding ourselves where we are. We've got Cassiopeia here, here. Um, we've got the Heart Nebula just off to the side, and we've got the Sol Nebula right next to it. Um, so that's where we're looking. Let's see whether we've got anything coming up. That a minute. Yeah, this might take a few minutes to actually produce anything worth looking at. I'm going to try and see if we can get something out of it. While we're waiting on that, what we will do is we'll take a look at uh, one we prepared earlier. So this shows you how close together the two objects are. This is the Heart Nebula. This is uh, an image taken by uh, one of my friends, Matthew, who used to be a member of NEAS. He sadly moved away to sunny France some time ago, but uh, still stays in contact. So this was the Heart Nebula that we were looking at. Again, it's the same sort of um, false color image. He's used a slightly different set of colors, but it's the same object. And then the other object, the Sol Nebula, is this one to the left. Again, you can see they're very similar. They are actually um, pretty much the same uh, thing in, in the same part of the sky. Um, again, it's quite dim, so quite hard to see on the live view. Do my best to stretch it out for you if I can. Right. Again, not a massive amount to see there. It's a bit, a bit difficult. What I will do is I'll show you what we've got. Um, again, it's this sort of patch of stuff here. It's not brilliant. Um, 
through this uh, telescope you can start to see as we take more images of it what we're doing is we're taking 30 second images of these objects so we expose the camera for 30 seconds and then we stop we show that image then the software takes another 30 second image and it actually adds those two images together takes a third one adds that to the original two and so on and so on and as we go on and on the, the object becomes a bit clearer and a bit clearer so at the moment we've got five uh, 30 second exposures that we've stacked together in, the, in this uh, this image here uh, now we've got six and every time it stacks the brightness will change a bit um, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the brightness and contrast to try and bring out um, the objects that we're trying to see here it can be quite tricky to really dim objects you can see that there is definitely something emerging there in the middle you can see kind of Okay, but yes, you can just about see it coming out here. If you compare that to the uh, many hours of exposures view, you can see that you know it takes quite a long time to actually get a nice picture of these objects. Uh, so that was the Heart and Soul Nebula that we looked at there. Um, what I will try now, I'm going to try and find another object, but this is another, on the other side of the sky, so it could be a bit of a challenge. Um, I'm not sure if we've got cloud or not, but what we'll do is we'll give it a go, see if we can find it. Um, just bear with me a minute. So, try. Moving across the It's going to take a few seconds. Okay, so just bear with me. So we're on the move again. I'll show you um, the machinery in action. So you can see these numbers here. This is telling us uh, telling us where the telescope is pointing. You can see it's moving quite quickly. It means that we're whizzing the telescope around the sky. Once it's, these numbers stop changing quickly and settle down, we know we're in the right part of the sky. Next thing I'll then do is I'll just see if I can see any stars in this camera. Who knows? No, we've got nothing but cloud, uh, which is a bit unfortunate, really. Um, let's see if we can improvise a bit. So rather than wasting our time trying to look on that bit of the sky, which is quite clearly clouded out, what I will do is I will see if I can very quickly um, add another object in here. So we'll sit on that one for a minute. Uh, we'll add another object. So. Bear with me a second, so what I need to do is find um, a different. Bear with me a minute, it takes a moment or two to sort out because I wasn't expecting to have to spend all of my time looking at the northern sky, but uh, we have got a few things up there that are worth looking at. Okay, there we go. So if I then look at your. Uh, in the Okay, hey, let's go there. Try and move to that object. Around the sky. So again, what we're doing there is we're moving around the sky. Um, this will take a minute or two. Go back to our live view. We can take a look at what's going on. We can again see the telescope is whizzing around. Um, Basically, we've moved from north to south, and now we're moving back south to north. I've got a rough idea of where the telescope is pointing. We've got a different planetarium, which I'm using here. You can see that it's finished moving. It's where these circles are. This is where we want to look. Have a look at what we've got going on. Um, yes, great. So we've got some stuff. What I'm next going to do is I'm going to go back to this chap here and just centric so we won't be in exactly the right spot. Bear with me a minute. Okay, so 
Ah, fail. <laughs> Need to connect the camera. Thanks. Try. Central on the target. Yes. Yeah, we take a picture. Figure out where we're looking. See if we're in the right spot. This doesn't always work. Um, can be a bit um, picky if it's quite cloudy or if it's a picky clear night. Um, not happy. Can't see anything. Up on that. All right. Okay. So basically, what's happening is we've got clouds shooting in and out of our view now. Um, Try again. Need to be patient with this, I'm afraid. Try one more time. Yeah. Here we go. Top picture. Hopefully, this one will have some stars. And the way this um, auto centering software works uh, is it basically takes a picture, identifies as many stars as it can in the image, and then um, tries to center on it. Doesn't always work if. We've got clouds coming and going as you can see again if we look back here we had a nice clear patch and now we suddenly don't have anything at all i think unfortunately um as ever in this country clouds have stopped play i think what we will do um is rather than sitting here chasing clouds all night was we'll call it a halt there and what we'll do is we'll try again tomorrow i think we've got a good forecast for tomorrow night so i'll set up another one of these sessions it'll be the same time about half past seven hopefully uh, and we'll fire up the telescope again and we'll have a look at some of the things that we couldn't see tonight um hopefully oh hang on a minute we've got a little clear patch here let's just give it one more go before we give up um whatever the optimist you have to be an optimist in in astronomy it's an uh, occupational hazard unfortunately uh, we often get our gear set up and then just as we're ready to go the clouds appear it's always the way but uh, sometimes we can uh, can get lucky not going to work um i think we'll, we'll give up at that point unfortunately i think the clouds are just going to keep coming and going at the moment um okay so thank you very much sorry it's uh, it's been a bit short we've only managed to See a couple of objects tonight but what we will do is we'll have another go tomorrow night i think the book forecast is a bit better uh, less cloud and uh, i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i'll try and jump on to the um, live stream and answer some questions if i can at some point um if you've got any other questions please go to our um to our facebook page or contact us by email and we will try and uh, try and answer whatever we can um it's you know we, we we have a quite enthusiastic team of people unfortunately we're at the moment obviously like everyone else locked down in our houses so we're trying to do more of this online stuff we've got a few other presentations that we're going to do that hopefully won't rely on good weather um so much we've got some interesting talks that we can give you oh hang on a minute we might get lucky you now we've suddenly got rid of uh, the cloud um, we might not have to pack up quite this minute Just bear with me this works, I think we'll be, uh, we'll, we'll be on for a, a quick go. This one more object before we call it a night. Oh, so we're in the right spot. Okay, disconnect there. Go back to this software. Camera, connect. Going. Right, so it's going to take 30 seconds. Um, so, what we're going to have a look at, assuming we get anything, um, this view is we're going to be looking at an object two objects actually which we did look at in one of our previous uh, live astronomy sessions a couple of galaxies called m81 and m82 uh, this is what they look like in the planetarium um, so again where are we looking well again our good old friend the plow here um, again that upside down sort of saucepan type object here North Star over here, Cassiopeia, where we've been spending our time recently, over to the side, and just up a bit from the end of the plough, M81 and M82. Now, these are a couple of galaxies. They are actually um, 
interacting with each other. Well, no, we're going to have any luck. So we've had one exposure where we've had nothing but cloud. Going to go in here and see if we get anything. Not what we will do is we'll I hang on a minute. So go here right, with. Show. And we might just cloud. Oh, we're actually ignoring all the images that we're taking. Um, go to the live view, you can just about see a little smudgy something here, um, which is part of the galaxy that we're interested in. One of the two. Three, four, and one. I've managed to take one so far. Oh, I think the cloud has just completely decided to take over tonight. Okay, I think we will then. We will call it a night. Um, what I'll do is I'll try and answer any questions. Again, as I said, if you come to our Facebook page, post any questions you've got for us, we will get back to you. And um, what we'll do is we'll have another go tomorrow night. So I'll schedule another one of these, assuming the weather's looking more favourable. And we'll have to try and have a look at a few of the things that we didn't manage to see last time around. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again soon. Uh, thanks very much.